James Kaufman, World News Report today. Ladies and gentlemen, it is the 13th of October, and we have slowly come out of that geomagnetic storm caused by that earth-facing coronal hole. Taking a look at our estimated planetary KP index, kind of gives us an idea of the solar winds and plasma hitting Earth, and you can see it's winged off from a geomagnetic storm earlier in the day to a disturbance, and now we're down into regular territory with no geomagnetic disturbances or storms happening currently. Now, some of the other indexes indicate other things, but we always try to use the estimated planetary index as that is NOAA and NASA's go-to index that has been recently updated. All right, so far today, we have a sun that's getting very angry. We have two Delta-class sunspots now, the most complex sunspots known, and one of them in particular, AR4246, has been being nasty to us. It started the day off at about, let's see here, 5.30 UTC time, which would be 12.30 Central Time here in the U.S. this morning with a M1.9 plus solar flare. That was followed up at 9.30 UTC Time, which would be about 2.30 Central Time, with an M2.75 solar flare. These are all coming from AR4246 that's directly Earth-facing that I will show you right after I show you the third M-class solar flare. It's an M, what I believe to be an M1.3 solar flare, maybe a little bit stronger, as you can see here. And it occurred right after 1.15 UTC time, which is going to be around 5.15 give or take uh, central time here this morning in the U.S. So that is the last M flare we've had. We had an M1.9, an M2.75, and now uh, something that looks to be about an M1.3+, plus, although it has not been rated completely by NOAA and NASA. All right, taking a look at those flares... AR4246, you can see, started the day as really a simple flare, then turned into a beta gamma flare here in orange, and is now red, a delta class, delta class actual sunspot group. You can see that it also is responsible for this C9.3. Here is the first of the bunch here, an M1.9. Uh, happening right around 12.30 this morning. And here is the second largest of the bunch, an M2.75, happening right around 9.20. Again, that's going to be about 2.20 Central Time. And the last event, the 1.3, doesn't show up here yet. Today we have a 5% chance of having an X-class solar flare, a 40% chance of having an M-class solar flare. That's going to all rise significantly now that we have two, two Delta sunspot groups. We also have AR4248 that's also morphed from simple to beta gamma to Delta class. And we're running a C3 baseline, i.e., so the M-class solar flare ship has sailed. And of course, since we're running a C3 baseline, well, we have a 99% chance of having a C flare. All right. And as I told y'all, everything's coming right at us from AR4246 up here, just about directly Earth facing. It's more from simple to more complex to the most complex Delta class just over the last six hours, and so has AR4248. It's more from simple to beta gamma to delta in just the last six hours. 
So we went from a very happy son to a very angry son. We currently only have six named sunspot groups earth facing. And I will say that 4252 also looks like it's becoming very complex. All right, head over to GOES 19 Solar Ultraviolet Imager. These are our two Delta class sunspots. I think that AR4246 is responsible for all three M class solar flares. Although we do see some action here uh, on top of AR4248, the other Delta class sunspot group. We're waiting on confirmation from the M1.3, which hasn't been assigned to a sunspot group yet, but visually it looks like it occurred, as you can see, from AR4246. Again, six total sunspot groups uh, Earth-facing on our solar disk. Several more coming around the limb. Look at this mess up here with the dark filaments, and we also look like we have a coronal hole coming around the limb as well. Now, NOAA has indicated that plasma will be inbound from a coronal mass ejection lifted by one of these M flares. Uh, I am guessing the 2.75 was sufficient enough or large enough to lift uh, at least one coronal mass ejection and, well, push it towards Earth. And they're looking for an impact late on the 16th here. The plasma just over 15 centimeters cubed. Until then, it looks like they think everything's all quiet. We also have solar winds on the 17th, or late on the 16th, into the 17th, moving up to about 675 kilometers per second. So again, they have at least one impact inbound, and that's for late on the 16th, today being the 13th. So we're looking at about 70 hours until impact. All right, we have the event that was at 5.30 UTC time, the event at 9.19 UTC time. But at 7.06, we do see plasma that's being pushed away from the sun. But at 7.06, the data is missing for over an eight-hour period. Eight hours and 12 minutes, to be exact. And that would be the time period that we had our 2.75 uh, solar flare that most probably ended up in the chrome mass ejection that NOAA is now indicating is inbound for a direct hit on Earth. Taking a look at our D region absorption prediction, well, we can see the last part of that big flare there. And then we move into, believe it or not, a sea flare right there over Africa. It's a C9, so it was a strong flare. And then this is going to be our M1.3 over most of the Atlantic parts of Africa and Brazil, i.e. South America. And that should be the last strong flare. Well, there's another flare we see there at 1650-1700 UTC time. And I did just check that one. It was a C7.25 right there. We can line up the time period perfectly with that strong C flare. So, and this would be, again, the... M1.3 here. We can kind of go backwards right there. And we can see the very end, if you will, which is right there, of the 2.75. That's about all we can. There it is right there, the 2.75. Over to STO HMI magnetogram image. Now, most SDO is down, but they're still running some of these images. These two are current as of today. And these are our two bad boys here. It looks like their normal polarity, although they're Delta class sunspots. This is our AR4246, and this is 4248. 
and well we have more complexity starting down here that we spoke about so like that's going to be fairly complex as it rolls to be more earth facing so it doesn't look like the sun's very angry but it is because we have two delta class sunspots earth facing over to soho 284 angstroms this was updated 806 last night central time 106 utc time and see that solar tornado and dancing dark filaments here we can also see well ar4652 that's moved further further around the limb by now and looks fairly complex but it's still simple then we see our two bad boys here ar4246 delta class now and more from simple to beta gamma to delta as did ar 4248 in the last six hours and there is some argument that this could be a coronal hole coming around the limb we'll know more about that by tomorrow finally taking a look at where earth is with all the other planets we still have a geomagnetic connection of pluto behind us saturn and neptune and sirius the moon is at a nine degree angle here so it's not a huge player. Uh, we will have a lineup between Uranus, the moon, and the sun coming up shortly here, within two weeks, uh, with all these geomagnetic connections to Uranus, Eris, Sirius, Neptune, Saturn, and Pluto. We can expect an earthquake at any time. We can expect upticks in solar activity. You don't necessarily need a planetary lineup when you have this much geomagnetism at work that's really all it takes to move the plates on earth i.e which causes volcanic and earthquake activity so you can also see the solar activity is ready to rumble because we're facing all of these gas giants and because we're in between the gas giants and sun, uh, our sun. That said, God bless you guys. Please share our video. Please help the channel with a cup of coffee if you're able or a super thanks. Uh, Got to keep those expenses paid. And ladies and gentlemen, subscribe if you haven't. Always remember, anything's possible. Bizarro world.